workspace. In the previous part, you saw that an important question is to know whether there exists a solution or not. In this picture, what you see is a graph, and this graph represents all the points that the end effector can reach. For example, this is ABB's IRB robot, and this robot can reach each of these points. So if there's a point within this area, it will be reachable by the robot. But if there is a point outside of this area, then the robot will not be able to reach that and there will not exist a solution for inverse kinematics. Let's see a simpler example. Let's consider an RR robot. In this case, this is the robot that we have been seeing since forward kinematics. But in this case, we are assuming that L1 is greater than L2, as you can see here. L1 is greater than L2. So now if you want to see what are the possible points that this end effect or this dot here can reach, it is something like this. Let's suppose that this is completely stretched. If this is completely stretched, it will be a complete line. And now let's fix this joint. Let's fix Q1. Q1 is this. Let's fix it. And let's just move Q2. Okay, so if we move Q2, this point is basically going to perform a circle, which is the circle that you observe here. So in this case, this Q2 is performing a circle because of its motion. Now we know that it will be a circle and now we will move this Q1. So if we move Q1 and we still have this circle, we will have at every point, at every possible point of Q1, we will have a circle, a circle, a circle, a circle. And at the end, we will have all this gray area that you see here. So that gray area is the workspace of this robot. In this case, this length is the sum of L1 plus L2, and this other length is the difference between L1 and L2. So the workspace lies between these two circles. If we want to say it mathematically, we can express it like this. So this is that the workspace are all the points, such as the module of the point from here to the point, lies between these two elements, L1 plus L2, which is this, like the greater circle, and L1 minus L2, which is this circle over here. This is if we are considering that both joints can go from 0 to 2 pi. Now, what happens if the joint limits are considered? Does the workspace change if the joint limits are considered? What are joint limits? Joint limits are values that restrict the motion of the joints. For example, a joint limit can say that now this Q1 cannot go from 0 to 2 pi, but only from 0 to pi, for example. So let's say that, that Q1 is going to go just from 0 to pi and Q2 also from 0 to pi. So in this case, what's the workspace? The workspace is of course going to be different to the previous one that we saw. But how different? Well, in fact, you will have to plot it yourself. If it is completely horizontal, and let's suppose that this Q1 has no motion, now Q2 can only move here, from here to here. It cannot move anymore because the angle just goes from 0 to pi. And now this can go all the way around, but also Q1 is restricted. Q1 cannot go further than this. And then again, this joint can move. So at the end, you will end up with this workspace in gray here. In this case, the workspace is reduced when joint limits are added. The analytic expression in this case is going to be much more complicated and we are not going to find it. The primary workspace is called the reachable workspace and it is represented by WS1. WS because it's workspace, 1 because it's the primary or reachable. It consists of positions that can be reached with at least one orientation. So for example, let's suppose that we have a position here, a point. I can reach this point with at least one orientation. So at least like this, if I can reach this point at least like this, I'm happy and I'm inside this workspace. Let's suppose I, am, I have another point. Now maybe I can reach it like this. I'm happy. Maybe I cannot reach it like this anymore, but I can reach it with this orientation and it's okay because at least I need one orientation. Let's suppose I have another point. Now I can reach this point with this orientation. If I can reach it at least with one orientation, I'm happy. So each point can be reached and orientation really does not matter in this case. If we are out of the primary workspace, there is no solution for the problem. And for all the points inside this workspace, if we use a proper orientation, there exists at least one solution. The other workspace is called the secondary workspace, WS2, or the dexterous workspace. What it says is that it contains all the positions that can be reached with any orientation, that is, with all possible orientations. For example, let's suppose again that we have this point. 
If this point is inside the secondary workspace, we can reach it maybe with this orientation, also with this orientation, also with this orientation, or in, or in general with any orientation. So in this case, we reach every point with all possible orientations. For all p in this dexterous workspace, there is at least one solution for every single orientation. Now, the relation between these two workspaces is that one is contained into the other. So WS2 is contained into WS1. Here is the first example that we saw of ABB's IRB robot. And in this case, this shows the primary workspace. But this robot has a spherical wrist. A spherical wrist means that it can move, it can have all the possible orientations. So it doesn't matter where the position of the end effector is, due to the spherical wrist, it will have all the possible orientations. So in this case, both workspaces are the same. This is an example for KUKA's LRB Iowa robot, which is this one. And this is an example for another robot, which is a parallel robot, a delta robot. In this case, the workspace is the one in blue that you see here.